Hey folks, Sam from the Eventbrite Boost team here. I hope you're having yourselves a fantastic day. And in today's video, we're gonna walk you through the process of how to set up our multi-event ads playbook. It's an amazing solution that allows you to advertise multiple events via one singular automated low cost campaign. It takes around five minutes to set up. And once you set it up, you honestly have to do nothing as it will automatically add new shows that you announce on sale to the campaign and automatically remove shows that end up happening or shows that sell out. So it's pretty much a set it and forget it style ad campaign. But before we dive in, I'd just like to give you a little bit of context of how this campaign works. So let's say, for example, you have 50 events on sale with Eventbrite. Normally, what we would have to do is we'd have to spin up an individual campaign to promote each event or direct to our main organizer page. But with our multi-event ad feature, you can set up one automated campaign that, let's say, for example, we had those 50 events. Instead of needing to create 50 different ad copies or 50 campaigns, we can create one campaign and it will automatically choose one one of your upcoming events in your what we call the catalog think of it as the inventory of the events that you currently have on sale it'll choose one of your upcoming events and display that to who you choose to target and instead of you needing to actually build the ad creative as you can see here we use these placeholders to pull in the name of your event the date of your event as well as the photo that you use for your event right event so if you had 50 events instead of needing to make 50 ad copies you basically set up this automated tool and it will handle all of that for you so let's go ahead and and jump into the campaign creation process. The first step of creating your campaign is going to be choosing the Facebook ad account you'd like to pay for the campaign with. You'll also want to make sure that ad account is inside of a business manager account as business manager is required to run these type of ads. If you haven't already done that, I'll leave a link to a video that will show you how to do that below. And then after that, you'll want to go ahead and choose your Facebook page and the Instagram page that you want your ad to run from. Now, after you've done that, we're going to generate what's called the catalog of the different event right events that you have on sale. Think of the catalog as almost the, the inventory or how we keep track of what events are currently on sale, what events end up selling out and what events no longer happen. So it's basically kind of creating a catalog of all the different events you have upcoming. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and choose your Eventbrite organizer account that your various events are under. Now, if you split your events into multiple organizer accounts, you can always select more than one to create this type of campaign. And then once you've done that, go ahead and click the generate button to build that catalog. Um, but if you also have an existing catalog, you can go ahead and choose it where I've already created a catalog here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the catalog I've already made and hit the continue button. In the select catalog segment step, this allows you to change or edit what events are actually being advertised by this campaign. So many creators that have a really decent volume of events, one of the most popular segmentation options is choosing to advertise events that are happening within 30 days so that you're only advertising to your customers normally when they're most likely to purchase and urgency is most likely at the highest for your event. However, if you are somebody that sells a lot of tickets early on for your events, you can also segment this to advertise events that recently went on sale in the past month. And there are a few more segmentation options such as segmenting by location or keyword or category. And if you scroll down a little bit further, this will show you all of the different events that are being advertised by your campaign. You can uncheck any events that you don't want to advertise. And just one note, you might notice multiple copies of a singular event. The campaign's catalog basically matches by ticket types. So if you have three ticket types available for a certain event, you might see that event three times within this section. So you wouldn't need to uncheck two out of the three or anything like that. Just know that if you happen to see multiple, it's part of the way the campaign is configured. So you could scroll through, uncheck any events that you don't want to advertise. And then once you've done that, go ahead and click the save button to hop to the next step. In the set schedule step, most people choose to run this campaign on a monthly basis. Because this campaign is completely automated, you generally don't need to go in and make significant edits to your campaign. So most people set it up as a kind of set it and forget it style ad campaign. I'd normally recommend a good duration to start the campaign for would be around a month. You can always go in here and pause the campaign or edit it to extend the duration. But I've seen people run this campaign as far as six months out in a lot of cases. So generally, you'll just want to set a more set it and forget it style schedule for this ad campaign. In the modify budget step, we'd recommend as a good starting budget for an ad campaign like this to spend around $5 a day. This budget could be dropped lower if you choose to exclude certain audiences from your campaign, but around a $5 daily budget should be perfect to get started and you can always spend more if you need to as well. 
In the event location section, you'll just want to enter the location where your events are occurring here. So let's just go ahead and enter in a location that we'd like to target. And then we can choose the age range for our targeting as well if we're hitting people above a certain age. Now within the next step, we are simply going to be entering in interests related to the events that we are actually marketing. So for example, if we are doing yoga and health and wellness, we would just go ahead and start by typing out something like yoga within this section. Generally, just as a reminder for Facebook interests, you can't target everything under the sun. So you'll want to start off by typing things that are relatively broad, just to kind of get a feel for what you could actually target in this section. So I might just go ahead and choose yoga. I might type out something like exercise to see what we could target physical exercise that looks great I might type out something like health here in this section so generally you're just kind of typing out some broad interest behaviors or demographics related to the events that you are actually advertising and then in this section you can always use the drop down to choose a few additional interests there is no right answer for the number of interests you have in here but I'd probably say maybe a good amount to maybe potentially have might be in the five to ten interest range but always try to prioritize quality over quantity in this section and then down towards the bottom, we automatically include a remarketing audience that is including people that interact with you on Facebook, your Facebook events, your Instagram page, if you have an Instagram page to select, as well as a Facebook pixel if you would like to remarket. So we have one audience helping us go after new people, and then one audience as well helping us retarget people that have purchased from you in the past, people that interact with your socials in that pixel traffic, which those are normally the individuals that are most likely to purchase with this style of campaign. Now, just as a reminder, if you always want to get more granular with your targeting, you can always switch this over to the advanced targeting version here in this section. You can go ahead and hit this add new button to add in additional audiences to the campaign. So let's say, for example, we knew with this campaign, we want to focus strictly on remarketing with what we're doing. We might want to add in an audience such as the Eventbrite group remarketing audience. So this would basically allow us to target people that interact with us on Facebook, Instagram, that Facebook pixel, as well as people that have bought from our previous Eventbrite events, or we could add in something potentially like a lookalike of past purchasers if we wanted to use that data to go after new people. So you can always use the simple targeting, but we would recommend you also can switch to the advanced targeting if you would like to get a little bit more granular with the audiences that you choose to target in this campaign, whether you're trying to go for a more prospecting approach and get new people checking out your events, or you're also strictly trying to handle remarketing. So once you've gone ahead and created your target audiences, click continue to the design ad step. Now, the way that this section works is instead of creating individual ad creatives for all of your events, we're actually using placeholders to pull information from your event right events to automatically create the ad creative for you. So you can see in this section that product name is going to correspond to the name of the actual event and then product brand corresponds to the location and the product custom label corresponds to the date at which the event is occurring. So one thing you'll just want to be conscious of, some people when they're creating events on Eventbrite might include the venue or the organizer name within the name itself. So that could be a case where you might potentially want to get rid of the product brand filter or something like that. You can always add in new placeholders to represent information by clicking this little code icon here. But generally in the most case, or for the most part, you don't need to do as much customization in this section. We always encourage you maybe change up the language, like the don't miss your chance to see, to have something that's a little bit more original and engaging. And you can always add in emojis as well to your ad content. And if you want to get a preview of the different events that are being advertised by this campaign, you'll simply want to use this drop down and you can go to all of your other events and click on a different event to get a preview of what that ad creative would look like. And if you ever need to you know, make significant changes to the images that are being ran, it normally automatically pulls from Eventbrite, but you can always hit the edit catalog images button to change up or replace one of the images for one of the events that are being advertised by the campaign. And then once you've com finished completing this step, you're actually fully done with the campaign setup process. And there isn't much that you're going to need to do besides maybe changing up the budget, 
changing a target audience in the future or extending the duration of your campaign. It's a really awesome set it and forget it style ad campaign. So let us know if you have any questions on the setup process. Once you've been done here, feel free to click the continue button to the next step where you will review the setup of your campaign and then you are all set to launch. So thank you for watching. Please let us know if you have any questions and I'm excited to see the power of multi-event ads help drive more sales for your event, drive awareness, and hopefully make your life a little bit easier at the end of the day without having to spin up a ton of campaigns to market your events. Take care.